My name is Fred P. Benny III. I was born in Monrovia, Liberia. Up until the age of four years old, my life was that of a regular, happy preschooler. And then Christmas Eve, 1989, happened. Armed rebel forces were invading the northeast region of the country, starting one of Africa's bloodiest civil conflicts and the first of two Liberian civil wars that would span over a long 14-year period claiming the lives of over 600,000 people. Before, seven months before the invasion, seven months after the invasion, the rebels would advance into the city, Monrovia, where my family and I lived. Weeks before that, you could, the atmosphere in the city had changed. You could feel the fear in the air. Curfews were imposed. Gun, men with guns and children, soldiers roaming the streets, raiding houses, looting, and killing innocent people with no rhyme or reason. I remember one night while my family and I were home, we heard a loud banging on our front door. Peeking through the curtains, we saw Gunmen with, with machetes being dragged on our concrete porch and hidden against our window bars, screaming at us to open the door. Scared for our lives, we hid under, under furniture. The banging would go on all night. As God had it, for some reason, they were unable to break down that door. Right before they broke, they left. Seeing the coast was clear, we immediately packed up whatever we could and left to go to my grandfather's house, which was about an hour walked away. The next day, the city was a complete war zone. Gunshots rang throughout the streets, stray bullets flying everywhere. And then, the unthinkable happened. A stray bullet flew through a window of our house piercing right through one of my auntie's leg. I could stay here and see the chaos and panicked, running through the front door screaming, emergency, emergency, help somebody, my sister has been shot, was one of my aunties. My mother who is here today, I believe in that with divine strength in the moment, grab my auntie and place her over her shoulders. And we will walk out of the house for 10 minutes looking for help, drenched, my mother being drenched in blood from head to toe. We went with the hospital and made it just in time before my auntie bled out. She will be treated and will recover fully. See, as the day went on, the fighting intensified. We would walk for 12 hours going towards the economic community of West African states, ECOWAS safety zone. This was an area where the fightings were less intense because these were international forces who had came to try to keep the peace. See, the war would go on for years and years after that. At some point, we even traveled to Ivory Coast, some of my family went to Ghana seeking refuge in those countries. The war would go on until 1996, and there was peace talks and a ceasefire agreement. This would be shut live. 1999, the fighting would start again, beginning a second war. This would go on until 2003. I lived in Liberia, 11 of those 14 years of hell on earth. In May of 20, 20, 2001, my sister and I would come to the States to live with our father. Having survived, I came with a resolve to do right and to make something out of my life. 
However, I will still face insults and ignorant remarks from misinformed high school students, asking them in questions like, had I ever been to school? And mind you, I was in ninth grade. Or questions like, did you have lions and giraffes for pets? You see, I knew that when we are born, our lives are subject, subjected to our environment. But when we die, our lives will be reflected by our choices. Our choices will reflect our lives. So I decided, having all the reasons in the world to latch out, I decided to choose my future over my past. This was no easy task, but grounded in my faith in God and with the help of surrounding myself with supportive family and friends, making the right decisions, I began to manage my thoughts, take control of my emotions, and keep away from places, things, and people that were derailment. This focus and determination served me well. I graduated high school with presidential honors and enrolled in college where I would study civil and construction engineering. I went into this field because I had a desire to learn the skill sets to one day return to my beloved country to rebuild. In this process, I discovered a passion that lit me up that was greater than building bridges and roads. This would be building people. Because, thank you. Because of what I had gone through, I realized I had the ability and the perspective to help people navigate the crisis and adversities and reconcile that with the callings and destinies. This led me to launching Conversation with Kings an initiative where we equip young boys and build them into men and men into leaders who will impact their families, their communities, and the world. Because a lot of the problems we have in our world is a lack of honest leadership. In 2015, I made the second best decision of my life. Second to surrendering my, surrendering my life to God, I married the most beautiful and brilliant woman of my life. You see, with whom we've launched, together she and I have launched the Fred and Cordelia Banning Foundation, where we equipped and provide resources to emerging leaders locally and globally. You see, I believe that we all have been destined for a great future. But the, the daily decisions and choices we make will determine whether we get to experience that future. There are some people who may try to marginalize, discredit, and even dismiss you because of your gender, because of your age, your lack of college degree, your race, color of your skin, or simply where you come from, the troubled neighborhood or the underdeveloped country. But I say to you all today that where you come from and what you've gone through does not devalue or take away from the greatness that is within you. We all have been created on purpose, for a purpose. I encourage you all to look deep within the adversities of your lives, and you will find your advantage. Because your story may not have been one of surviving 11 years of hell on earth, but you do have a story nonetheless, and it is one that is needed and necessary. Thank you. Embrace 
all of who you are and everything you've gone through because there is glory in your overcoming story. Thank you.